Very good. What I want you to do, I want you to write that down, okay, that definition. There don't appear to be any serious behaviour problems, but Dylan notices something he sees time and time again. Okay, guys, hands up then. Shh, hands up. Some kids can't wait to take part. Can I please have two people who have, ooh, two people right there. While others just switch off and opt out. Hands up, what are some of the worst things do you think about the slave trade? William. Dylan thinks that hands up is one of the most damaging things that happens in a classroom. He believes only a quarter of students consistently put their hand up. Hold. See a few more hands, guys. I've got the same hands every single time. Emily. 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 Fed thousands. Yeah, fed the five thousand. Any other? I try to put my hand up quite a lot. Um because I feel like I'm getting more involved in the lesson. I think the smart people put their hands up when they when a teacher asks a question because most of the time they know what they're doing. And like the shy people tend to sort of stay out of that. Sid and Katie aren't as keen to volunteer. Okay. I put my hand up in class when I feel like I've got the right answer, but I don't do it as often as the other students because there's only a few lessons that I think I'm quite good at. OK. Whether it was a lovely picture of maybe that girl... I put my hand up in class when I feel like I'm 100% confident that I've got the right answer. Because if I'm not 100% confident, I feel like everyone would laugh if I got the wrong answer. Even though that's not the case, really. That's just what I feel and that's to do with my confidence. It's always the same students putting themselves forward. The more confident ones, like Harvey and William. The kids who generally sit at the front. The less confident ones, like Jamie and Holly, sit at the back. Hey, come in, please. Dylan wants to start by asking the teachers to use a technique he's been advocating for over a decade. The children who are answering everything you, you ask them are actually getting smarter. Their IQs actually go up. And there are other children in the same classroom who are foregoing that opportunity to get smarter. So if you're allowing children to volunteer, to participate or not, in your classroom, quite simply, you are making the achievement gap bigger. First change I want to encourage you to make in your classrooms is that when you ask a question, students do not raise their hands and you choose who to answer. It's very hard to do it at random unless you have some kind of randomization device. The way to choose students' names at random is to write their names on lollipop sticks, put them in a pot, and when you've asked a question, just pull out a student's name at random. They, they, they know that they Dylan the knows this is going to be tough for the teachers. To another student. So little techniques like that can, can really help to, to make... He wants them to end a practice that's been a classroom habit for over a hundred years. It's probably going to be a mixture of apprehension um, um, because it's going to be something new. And I think when you, when you do something new for the first time, human nature is it's, you think it's going to fail. And then tell the students that you It scares me because it's new. It scares me because it's something that I don't normally sort of think about. I have gotten into the habit of feeling very secure with put your hands up, don't call out. It's that sort of, you know, no shouting out loud. And one of the ways to sort of, uh, sort of circumnavigate that is by kids, put up your hands, you know, so you've, you've got a, a sort of order in the class. Mm -hmm.